Let's now speak to Simon Mabin. He joins us from Lancaster. He's a lecturer at the University of Lancaster. Thank you so much for being with us, Simon. As Stephanie says there, we're in a sort of wait-and-see situation right now. There are those who see this deal as simply an effort to secure the Assad government and drive rebel factions apart. He is very defined, as we've heard. What's your view? What do you think is going to happen? I think that's the million dollar question and we will learn very quickly whether this ceasefire will hold or not. I think we'll find out in the in the first couple of hours and the first few days as to whether this ceasefire will be successful or not because if we start to see a number of low-level scuffles and skirmishes but not a sustained campaign of violence then there is hope. But if, as I fear, we'll see a continuation of hostilities and groups increasingly using violence when there's supposed to be a ceasefire, then we'll see this ceasefire breaking down very quickly. And I fear that given the complexity of the situation and given the, the investment of a number of actors, that is far more likely that this ceasefire will quickly descend back into violence once more. And the violence has escalated already. I mean, we've witnessed as has been the case in uh, previous ceasefires. We've seen a scramble uh, by the different parties there to, to gain the upper hand. Who's got that upper hand right now? I think it's pretty obvious who's got the upper hand. If we look at uh, the death toll, I mean, pure statistics suggest that over 400,000 people have died. And of that number, the Assad regime is, is responsible for killing around 360,000 people. That's 360,000 of his own people, his own citizens, that he's responsible for killing, which is a barbaric figure. So if we look at that, then it's pretty clear that the Assad regime has, uh, has had a very strong role to play within this conflict. And what Assad has said this morning about retaking all of Syria and, and crushing terrorist groups, then I think he's pretty, uh, pretty strict with regard to what he's viewing as an opportunity to retake all of Syria, framing anyone who opposes him as a terrorist group. And I think that's going to be a real key point of tension between the US and Russia, mm. with Russia supporting the Assad regime with regard to its calculations and its prescription of terrorist organizations. Even those... So I think it's pretty clear that the Assad regime will just use this. And this is why probably we hear a very defiant Assad. Even those within the Syrian political opposition, Simon, are very skeptical about this ceasefire deal. Uh, they say they weren't consulted. Is this just another example of how it's the Russians and the Americans ultimately deciding what goes on in Syria? I mean, does the political opposition have a role left to play in this? Well, I fear that you're right in that the, what seems to be happening is that external actors, people outside of Syria, seem to be shaping the country's future, which is incredibly problematic when you take into account what's actually happening on the ground. You've got a state that's infrastructure, its basic infrastructure has been destroyed, that has been eviscerated. So not only have over 400,000 people died, but, but their basic uh, communities, infrastructure, institutions have been destroyed. And yet people outside the state seem to be shaping its political future, which I guess is one of the reasons why there's so much concern from people within Syria and so Speaking. much distrust about what's actually happening. Hey, Simon, thank you so much for that. Simon Mabin uh, joining us there from uh, the University of Lancaster. Thank you for your thoughts on the situation in Syria. Thank you.